What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use some of the interior artificial lighting options in order to light your scenes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first off, model credit for this model. This is a SketchUp 3D warehouse model. It's the O Tofu 2 by ID. LLB. So if you want to download this and follow along, you definitely can. A couple things to note about this, I've swapped out a couple different materials in here. I've added some can lights in the roof, and I've also saved it as a SketchUp 2018 file. Um, I found my 2020 file wasn't importing right, so I saved it as an older version. So if you are working in 2020, you may want to think about saving this as an older version. And so what we want to do is we want to import this into D5 Render. And so if you're Remember, you can do this by going to your welcome page and then just clicking on create new and finding your model. And so when this gets brought in, I haven't done a whole lot with the textures or materials and I'm probably not going to for this video. I want to focus on the lighting options that we have in here. And so the first thing I want to do is if you look around inside of this, uh, if you look around inside of this uh, model, right now it's being lit by the lighting on the outside. So a lot of lights coming through the exterior windows into the building. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my time or my outdoor settings and I'm going to move this until it's more of like a night scene because I want to light this scene using interior lighting. And so you'll notice when you do this, this takes a second and then it kind of uh, it kind of auto exposures its way in here. Don't worry about that too much for right now. What we wanted to do is we just wanted to make sure that our skylight intensity was very low and that our sunlight intensity was very low as well. And so now what we want to do is we want to add some interior artificial lights to this scene. And so you can see the artificial lights by looking at the top of the page. And there's four options for these. There's the point light, the spotlight, the strip light, and the rectangular light. And so let's take a look at each one of these and get an idea of what they do. So to start off, let's add a point light. So to add a point light, you're just going to click on point light. Then you're just going to move your mouse in here. You're going to notice that now wherever you move your mouse, this has a little point of light associated with your mouse. What we want to do in this situation is we want to place the point light inside of these lights right here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to click. So when you first get this, you're going to notice that when you click, this light is going to get this little gizmo in here that allows you to move things up and down, left and right, things like that. So you can also rotate this, which for a point light isn't really going to matter because it's literally a point in space that uh, shines light out into your model. But you can move this around by doing that. And notice that when you do this, when you have a light selected, you get options in here for things like the brightness of your light. So notice if I drag this up, this is way brighter. If I drag it down, it's a lot dimmer. You can also adjust the radius of that light. So that's going to adjust the size of the circle of light that's in here. So notice when you do this, it's going to flash a little bit. Don't worry about that too much, but you can use this to adjust the size of that light. So the larger this is, the more light this is going to emit. So theoretically, you can adjust the color temperature and color of the light. For this one in particular, that doesn't seem to be working right now, but the option is in here with these lights. Let's say that we wanted to create a copy of this light. So the way that you can do that is you can actually rotate around and first of all where you can find these lights is if you go into your list there's an option down here for resource management down below and you can set this to either hide your light sources or not but you can also select these just by clicking on them right here and so in this situation what i want to do is i want to take this light and i want to copy it and so you can copy it by holding the shift key and clicking and dragging so notice as I hold the shift key and I click and drag, this creates a copy of this light. And so now this is going to show up over here as well. And so you can create multiple copies really quickly by doing this. So just hold the shift key and move your mouse over here. I have not seen a way to use like the array function or an array function in order to do this. It may be in here, but I haven't found it. So as of right now, I'm doing all of this manually. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're just going to find these lights, hold the shift key, and we're just going to create copies along this blue axis all the way down here. So I'm just holding the shift, moving it down, holding the shift, moving it down. And that's a really quick, easy way to place these lights in here. But these 
are the point lights. So the point lights are shining out in every direction based on a point in space. Well now, let's add some spotlights. So you can see how on the roof, and you can't see it super well, but you can definitely see it in here. On the roof right now, I've added some can lights in here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add a kind of light that has a direction associated with it, which is going to be a spotlight. So to place a spotlight, we're just gonna click on spotlight right here, move our mouse over this point, and then click again. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to create a light it has a direction associated with it. And so before we take a really close look at this, let's go ahead and uh, turn off these lights. So you can see how you can come through and you can click on these little eyes in here in order to turn these lights off. Well now, if we look at this, all of our point lights have been turned off and the only light that's going in here is our spotlight. And so if we select our spotlight, you're gonna notice that we've got a few other options in here that we didn't have with the point light. So you need to remember that these lights actually have a direction associated with them. So you need to pay attention to what direction they're facing. Notice that as I rotate this around, the light is going in a different direction depending on the way that I rotate this. So you can adjust the direction that these face by um, selecting and dragging this rotation to give it a different angle. So you can also adjust the light profile, meaning this light is going to shine differently depending on which one of these I select. So um, you can select any of these that you want. You can also upload a custom IES file. And then for this one, you can adjust things like your brightness. So how bright your light's going to be, how much light this is going to emit. You can also click in here and type in a value. You can also adjust your cone angle. So your cone angle is going to adjust how far outward your light goes. So you can kind of see this as this flashes. If I have a very narrow cone angle, it's gonna shine like straight down. If I have a very wide cone angle, the light's gonna go out a lot more. So you can see how the radius for where the light is shining is out a lot more with that cone angle. Then you can also adjust the fall off distance. And so the fall off distance is going to affect how far the light travels from that light. So you can see how right here, for example, if I turn the fall off distance way down, the light doesn't even get to the table. If I turn it up a little bit, it gets to the table, but it doesn't go much further than that. So in this situation, I'm maybe going to turn this down to about 150. I'm going to turn my cone angle down to about 40. And I'm going to turn my fall off distance up just a little bit. But you can see how one of the cool things about this light is it's actually casting shadows as well. So these shadows are being cast based on that light, which makes these a little bit more realistic. And I have not tested the color temperature on these. Um, it doesn't really seem to be changing anything having to do with that light right now. Um, but theoretically the settings are in here. Um, they don't seem to be working, at least based on what I'm seeing right here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna make copies of my spotlight by holding the shift key and moving these across. And one thing you're gonna notice about this when you're doing this is it doesn't look very realistic because at the moment um, we don't have a material applied to these lights that's going to glow. And so what you have is you have an artificial light that's shining in here, but at the same time, um, you're not seeing the light source in your rendering, so it looks kind of weird. It's like this is being lit with lights that are off, and it just kind of looks wrong. And so what we're gonna do after I'm done making these copies is we're gonna apply a material to each one of these lights that's going to make it look as if the light is actually emitting light. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to apply a special material to each one of these um, that's known as an emitter. And so real quick, I'm going to toggle off just this one spotlight for right now. And so what I want to do is I want to take a look at this material that we have applied to this object. So if you look at this object right now, it doesn't really have anything special having to do with the material. And what I've done, if I click on this, is you can see how I've applied a different material to the face of each one of these objects inside of SketchUp than your normal material. It shows up as default SketchUp material, but it, I don't know why it says that because it's not the default material. But in any case, what I'm gonna do, because each one of these has that same material, is I'm gonna go in with the material, um, with the material picker, and I'm going to select a material template of emissive. So when I select the option for emissive, what this is gonna do is this is now going to emit light. So 
if I click and drag this little slider, you're going to notice that now all of a sudden these lights actually emit light. And so usually the emitters don't do a great job of lighting your scene. Usually you want to couple them with a spotlight. But what you're going to notice about these emitters is now these lights are going to glow. So it actually looks like they're casting light inside of your scene. So a lot of the time you'll couple this with um, a lot of the time you'll couple this with your spotlights inside of your scenes. And clearly I've done a poor job of lining up all of these lights, but we'll go ahead and leave most of them as is for right now. But you're gonna use this in order to make something that emits light. And so we're gonna do the same thing with these lights over here. So you can see how these lights right here, um, they're a light that kind of hangs down. Well, they have their own material applied to them as well. So if you look at these and you click on them, they've got this material associated with them. And right now they're in here as a light. Well, I wanna change these to an emitter as well. And so if I click on the button for emissive, you can see how now these over here are going to emit light. We may need to come back in and add some point lights on this. I'm not 100% sure, but for now, we'll just leave them as emitters and we'll see how this renders out. And so now we've got our artificial lights kind of set up in the scene, but what I wanna do is I wanna now add a light that goes underneath this wood piece right here. So in this situation, what's gonna make sense is to use the strip light. And so the strip light is gonna be a light it's basically a line that emits light. So if I select this and click to put this in my scene, you can see how it has the same kind of options that our other lights have. But in this situation, this one, we can adjust the length. So you can see how this is basically like a tube that emits light. And you can adjust this, you can adjust the brightness that this creates by using the brightness slider down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this at 250 and I'm hoping that I can get a color off of this one, but it doesn't seem to want to give me a color. Maybe that'll render out with a color. I'm not 100% sure, but we're gonna go ahead and leave that as is, but you can see how this is basically a line or a tube that's going to emit light. So now if we take a look at our scene and I'm gonna drop back a little bit over here and we probably need to turn our point lights back on. So I'm gonna turn those back on. And by the way, if anyone knows a quick way to do this for multiple objects, let me know. Um, you can hold the control key and select multiple lights at once and change like their settings, but you can't turn them on and off at once that I've seen. So, but now we've got all of our lights turned on. And then the last light, which I'm not gonna to talk too much about for this scene, uh, the last light is a rectangle light, which you can bring in. I'll go ahead and bring this in just so you can see it. And this is basically going to cast light in a direction. So this can be really helpful for throwing a bunch of light um, into a scene if it's too dim. So if you wanna add a bunch of light, you can see how as I rotate this, this is shining light based on the face or based on the direction this rectangle is facing. So if I turn this up, just so you can see this, you can see how whatever direction I turn, this is really good at casting light over a large area. And you can adjust the size of that as well, just by clicking and dragging this slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out of here for right now, because we're not gonna use it for our scene. And then I'm just gonna go back to my original scene where I forgot to save my lighting settings. We'll go ahead and save this and then we'll render out our scene. And there's some other things you can adjust in here as well. Like you can adjust your exposure to bring the brightness of the scene down if you want to. So you can see how I can kind of adjust this. So I get a little bit more of that, a little more contrast, but then we'll go ahead and we'll just click on render. So we'll just click on render. We'll click on photo and then we'll just export this as a 2K. Maybe adjust our field of view in a little bit. And then we're gonna click on export. And we'll let this render out. And so there's a couple material things I need to fix, but overall, um, this should give you a pretty good idea of how the interior artificial lighting settings work inside of D5 Render. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you used the artificial lighting types inside of D5 Render? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.